I'm sorry, I'm not really good at making eye contact. So I've devised this setup. In this way, I am both looking at all of you, and none of you, in the eye. It may even be these kinds of awkward shortcomings, and the desire to become free and swift and deft, that has spurred me to contrive of an art practice. A practice that simply probes the alternative. And it's often when I'm awkward and uncomfortable that I start looking for alternative ways of doing things. If I'm too shy to look at you, there is perhaps a way of going about that. And perhaps this very mode of looking at you becomes a little world of its own. That's a trick. That's a gimmick. But for me, my practice has precisely become a place to test out cheap tricks that question the authenticity of whatever I'm copying. The current approaches to AI engineering involve a lot of cheap tricks too, copying features of a human mind without understanding much about it, and yet the prowess of these technologies begin to complicate the assumed unprogrammability of souls and free will. My practice often ruminates on this, whether what feels like a cheap trick, whether it's to get out of shyness and fake confidence, or to superficially engineer intelligent systems, really is that inferior to what we might call the real thing? What if the whole universe were made up of cheap tricks, which, when added together, become really quite expensive? I used to draw a lot, and it really got interesting for me when I started to believe in my cheap tricks, when each line was no longer a tool of representation. No line was cheap anymore. They were not sneaky arbiters of illusion, but allusion. Lines aren't pretending. They are very much the fabric of this world as anything else. They don't pretend to be a tree or a face. They allude to trees or faces we've seen, in life, or in books, or in stories, and they allude to much more than that such as my hand, and my intentions, and other artists, and other hands. Any drawing is both very, very old, and absolutely new. I then did a lot of performing. I told stories off the bat, made them all up, made up new personas, and composed them of borrowed accents and gestures heard from elsewhere. Again, it struck me, in all this very different-looking practice, that all this copycatting I was doing were not quite such cheap tricks, even when nothing about it seemed honest or consistent, something felt very real about being other people. It wasn't quite acting, just as drawing wasn't quite representing the world in 2D. In performance, I was becoming a line, like the lines in my drawings. A line is a body that lends itself to becoming other. So the line is now my favourite shape. To me, it is the least self-imposing kind of entity. It exists entirely to take on the shape of anything else, in a drawing, in a sound wave, in a gesture. It is a shape that lets the world in. If an echo could have a shape, it would be a line. Now I'm writing a novel. The main character is a line. In other words, the main character is a nobody, or a nobody in itself. It's a bunch of writing that has become something of a strange laboratory. In the petri dish of the novel, I've dropped this character without qualities and watched it develop. She hasn't actually figured out that she's a line yet. She thinks she's a she. She thinks she has a name and a body, because she has inherited a world like ours, so fraught with stories and cultural artefacts and landscapes and tools and systems, all of which seem to suggest something person-like ought to reside there. She is insinuated by the novel. Here is a fictional character unfurling. Lies and tricks are fundamental in fiction, getting away with untrue things. But there's something very confident about my faking my confidence. And there is something very real when fiction pretends it is real. This is why I invite you to see the contrivance of this presentation, and look into my very script, which I should have hidden. This is why the novel I am writing is fully available online in its unfinished form, and which anybody in the world can comment on or literally see the words being added in real time. In all this working out, it is the very working out that strikes me most. The process of creativity in general, and how all its tricks and manoeuvres by no means undermine the magic of fiction, and how fiction emerges in ways not necessarily 
too dissimilar from the real world that we live and breathe.